to those of you worshiping with us through the beauty of the, this sanctuary and our building. Good morning to those of you worshiping with us through the beauty of the sanctuaries, wherever you are on Zoom. And welcome to any who are viewing our live stream, no matter when you are doing so. For no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm going to do a small, I would invite us to turn our hearts to worship and rise in body or spirit as you are able to join us in the responsive call to worship. Our Easter acclamation first and then our responsive call to worship. Christ is risen. God of infinite mystery, your love is the heart of the universe. The beloved abides within and among us with grace. Holy one, your love is the great power within all things. The beloved rules over the universe with tender compassion and mercy. Christ, your love has ascended to the throne of all creation. There is no greater power, no authority higher than that of your love. Your love is your power. Your love is your might. Your love is your victory. The beloved is our heart, and we are the body of the beloved. Hallelujah. Come, spirit of love, and reign over us. Come, beloved, and transform us in your grace. Our opening hymn is in our black hymnals at number 26, We Worship You, God. Please join your spirits with mine in prayer. Dear Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend, we gather this day to worship you in song, in prayer, in word, with our lives. And we give thanks, O oh God, that you call us to gather in your name, to be church in these days, and to proclaim your love wherever we go. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We approach the throne of grace, trusting our God of steadfast love will receive our confession and have mercy on us. Let us pray together. Spirit of love reigning over us even now, we have not lived our lives as people of your reign. We place our crowns on hopelessness, fear, and selfishness. 
We choose to be ruled by our schedules and our need for control. We pay homage to the things we acquire and venerate our immediate desires. We too often forget that your response to our prayer is to draw your reign near to us on earth, even as it is in heaven. Forgive us and have mercy on us, we pray. Open our eyes anew to your heart, Lord, that our souls with you may rise up. Amen. When we rise up within ourselves through confession, we discover that we are in the company of our God and all the saints in light. To abide there in gratitude is to know forgiveness. I invite us now to rise in body or spirit, move around, greet one another with a sign of unity and reconciliation as through the chat and in the building we pass the peace of Christ. We all return to our seats. I invite any children who would like to to meet me up here on the steps. Ah. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ah. Does anybody know what today is? Hey, they are on it. It's your mom's birthday too? Wow, that's, that's a double day for her. And your friend's birthday is today too? No. Your friend's mom's? Okay, well it is definitely Mother's Day. And wow, there's lots of birthdays happening. Well, it's a special day. Well, I wanted to share with you today a brand new book I got. I always get very excited when I get new books. Well, and this is one I hadn't seen before, even though it's been out for a couple years, but it's called M Mother God, and I thought it was perfect for Mother's Day. So I wanted to share this one with all of us. You know God the Father, but God is your mother too. You are made in her image. She is making all things new. Look at that. She's a potter. This woman's a potter. Waiting for new life to begin, God is a mother in labor. She takes deep breaths until the birth, rejoicing with friends and neighbors. Throughout day and night, God wakes to nurse the infant in her side, at her side. Okay, so I can't read upside down. There we go. Oh, maybe Cecily could hold it. Could you hold that side? All right, great. All right, so I'm, oh, Greta, sorry. <laughs> Oops. Throughout day and night, God wakes to nurse the infant at her side. She snuggles her baby gently until he closes his sleepy eyes. When baby tumbles on the floor, God pulls off each tiny sock. She holds her arms out wide, and the baby learns to walk. God is Sophia Wisdom, teaching what is true and right. Wisdom works, creates, orders, and plays. She calls us with joy and delight. Over the waters of creation, God is the spirit who hovers. She forms the earth into a bed and the wide sky 
its covers. God is a mother hen who gathers chicks under her wings. She plays hide and seek in soft grass behind trees and quiet springs. She protects her cubs from danger, God the great mother bear. As fierce as she is tender, she guards them in her care. God is a lurking leopard, secretive, skilled, and strong. Teaching her young to swim and climb, she roars and they tag along. With a huge supply of flour, God kneads and bakes good bread. She feeds her entire neighborhood. They feast and all are fed. God is a skillful seamstress who stitches and sews thread together. She makes clothes for rain, snow, and sun, caring for you in all kinds of weather. Granny Baba Halmioni is God is a woman with gray hair. She passes down stories of old, rocking softly in a chair. She is the God who sees you. God weeps, mourns, and cries. She comforts you through the longest night, keeping watch until sunrise. She quiets us with her songs, singing lullabies in the night. God, our nurturing mother, wraps us in holy moonlight. God is your loving mother. You are made in her image, too. God calls you beloved. She is making all things new. I like my new book. Do you like my new book? I think it's very pretty, and I think it's very important, and I think it's perfect to think of God as mother on Mother's Day. And I know that there is a song in our hymnal that talks about God as a mother. And so this is going to be our prayer, okay? So join me in prayer. Maybe close your eyes. You can hold out your hands like this. You can hold them like this. All right? Strong Mother God, working night and day, planning all the wonders of creation, setting each equation, genius at play. Hail and Hosanna, strong Mother God. Thank you for loving us, strong Mother God. Amen. All right, it's time to go to Sunday school. So teachers, kids, off you go.
One of the nice things about being in the choir is that uh, we get to hear how God is here with us many times. You got it once. But I feel like, uh, I feel like God is here. So some readings from scripture. From the Psalms, Psalm 47. The songbook of the Hebrews. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great ruler over all the earth. God subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. God chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob and Rachel and Leah, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet, Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our ruler, sing praises. For God is the ruler of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is ruler over the nations. God sits on a holy throne. The rulers of the peoples gather as the people of God of Abraham and Sarah for the shields of the earth belong to God and God is highly exalted. And the epistle letter today is a reading from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, written most likely by a first century follower of Jesus, a companion, or someone who knew Paul well. And it was written to the people of the early church in Ephesus. 
I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope which he has called you, what are the riches of Christ's glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe according to the working of God's great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised Christ from the dead and seated Christ at God's own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And God has put all things under Christ's feet and has made Christ the head over all things for the church, which is Christ's body, the fullness of the one who fills all in all. And finally, a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in this one's name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. And see, I'm sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while Jesus was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And thanks be to Mike for those beautiful readings. So, for roughly 40 days, those first 40 days immediately following the discovery of an empty tomb where Jesus' crucified body had been placed, our sacred stories tell us our risen Lord was out and about and making appearances with those first disciples and followers of the way. From that first Easter morning appearance to Mary Magdalene in a garden near the tomb, to the collection of women returning from the tomb, to Peter near Jerusalem later that same day, to two disciples on a road to Emmaus and while they were breaking bread together. Then that same evening in a locked room to the disciples except for Thomas. A week later in that same room, in the same house, Again, to the disciples, this time, including Thomas. Then a fishing reunion on the Sea of Galilee with seven disciples. To a gathering with 11 disciples on a mountaintop, also in Galilee. To what then may have been a megachurch-like audience of over 500 disciples at once. Not exactly sure where, story didn't think that was important. To a one-on-one -on -one with his brother James before a whole host of disciples and followers on the way throughout those 40 days, prior to ascending into heaven, as mentioned in the book of Acts. Also at the Mount of Olives near Bethany, including one of the stories of the ascension that Mike just read for us. After ascending, an appearance to Stephen, immediately before Stephen was martyred by stoning, a horrifying event witnessed by one named Saul, Following that, appearing to Saul, soon to be known as Paul, on a road to Damascus, and even later yet, to one named John on the island of Patmos, 
some 37 miles southwest of Ephesus. Quite an itinerary for those 40 days, plus a few post-ascension extras, wouldn't you say? Speaking of ascension, which even though it gets full mention in the Nicene Creed of, three, of the year 325, and as a non-creedal church in our congregational tradition, we still include the Nicene Creed in the list of creeds and affirmations of faith and the worship resources in the back of our hymnals. This creed carries the well-known phrase, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Incidentally, I'm sure you won't be surprised that I learned the Nicene Creed like I've learned so many scriptures and theology and touchstones of my faith by singing it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I won't sing the whole thing, but I could. Now back to the topic of ascension. In some parts of our Christian tradition, the 40th day after Easter is observed as Ascension Day, sometimes even with special worship gatherings or even taking the day off work. Where Beth and I lived before, we had a farmer's market in that town. And it wasn't an open-air market, but uh, many of those who, who had stands in that farmer's market were um, Mennonites, and the market was closed on Ascension Day every year. And some churches, including ours today, note or mark the story of Jesus' ascension on the Sunday following that 40th day. It is quite a story, the ascension of Jesus, a story, by the way, that only the writer of Luke Acts, two books of our New Testament, early church tradition, uh, that our early church tradition and men, many biblical scholars since then attribute to the same writer, but the authors of Matthew, Mark, and John don't have the story of the Ascension at all. They're kind of slight inferences, but not really. But to the writer or the author or the storyteller of Luke and the book of Acts, there actually are two accounts with some distinct differences. One in the Gospel, which we heard this morning, and one in Acts, which goes into a lot more detail. The one in Luke's Gospel is placed at the end of Jesus' ministry, and we heard Mike read that today, and its purpose seems to be a substantiation of Jesus' ministry, kind of like an exclamation point. The one in Acts is placed at the beginning of the Apostles' ministry, and its purpose seems to be the endorsement or authorization of the Apostles' work of proclamation in founding the early church. And perhaps this one is also like an exclamation point, this time more like the Spanish usage of an upside down exclamation point at the beginning of an exclamation. Or perhaps if we think in our UCC punctuation terms, maybe it's a comma. But regardless of the punctuation intended or inferred, for this author, writer, and storyteller we know as Luke, the ascension of the risen one seems to serve as a bridge that moves the story of our faith from Jesus as an incarnated, crucified, and resurrected embodiment of God to the apostles, the first disciples and others, apostle in Greek literally meaning the ones sent, to proclaim all that they have witnessed and learned, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, ah, that's the teaser for next Sunday, to sing praises to God and to create with great joy the church, which is Christ's body, the fullness of the one who fills all in all. Yes, it is quite a story, the ascension of Jesus. And like so many good stories of our faith, it contains portals or gates or entrances or openings to deepen our experience or understanding of or relationship with God and one another. And I can honestly say, along with John Shelby Spong and recently retired Canadian Lutheran pastor Don Hutchings and many, many followers of Jesus, even some of us who call ourselves Christians, from the first century to our present day, that the ascension never really happened. It's not a historical event. That wasn't the point. 
The very present Jesus of resurrection faith did not literally elevate into heaven while his disciples looked on. Hutchings continues, the important question for most biblical scholars is not whether the ascension actually happened, but rather what did the ascension mean to the author at the time? And to that question, we might add a more pressing question. Given what the ascension meant in the first century, does it continue to have any relevance for those of us who live in the 21st century? I do believe that the followers of Jesus had experiences of Jesus that were so overwhelming, they saw Jesus in Jesus, the human face of God. I also believe that in very powerful ways, the followers of Jesus continued to experience Jesus' presence among them and within them. Those powerful experiences of Jesus after his death were so intense that they defied description. Given that Jesus was now dead and gone, yet his presence still seemed to be with them, the followers of Jesus used their well-known Hebrew story of Elijah and Elisha to construct a belief about the spirit of Jesus continuing to be powerfully among them. By the time the writer of Luke's and, Luke and Acts got around to writing these stories down, they were different there were different versions of the story being passed around in the early church. And the writer of Luke Acts paints a picture of a reformed bodily Jesus going up into the heavens in the ascension, followed by a windy, fiery spirit coming down at Pentecost. This writer uses powerful, familiar Hebrew images, in, images to portray the experiences of Jesus' followers after his death. And those early followers' many and varied experiences throughout those 40 days following his crucifixion and beyond inspired them and fortified them and empowered them to keep rising up. Yes, rising up in faith, in hope, in love, to rise up and even create church, a communal expression of all they had experienced and learned and wanted to continue in their lives, to be witnesses, to gather together, to hold all things in common, to sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. This is all in the book of Acts, by the way. To break bread at home and eat with glad and generous hearts, all while praising God. Why, we might even say they were building and serving community in Christ's name. Rising up, it seems, is bound up within, or woven into, or pulsating within the very heart of our faith in a God who also rises up. Not before or without living and learning and being among us, but within and because this God, our God, creates in love, redeems in love sustains in love, lives in love, is love rising up in us. Even as Episcopal priest, poet, writer, and theologian Alla Renee Bozarth imagines in her stunning poem, Baker Woman God. Baker Woman God, I am your living bread. Strong, brown, baker woman God, I am your low, soft, and being-shaped loaf. I am your rising bread, well kneaded by some divine and knotty pair of knuckles, by your warm earth hands. I am bread well kneaded. Put me in fire, baker woman God. Put me in your own bright fire. I am warm warm as you from fire. I am white and gold, soft and hard, brown and round. I am so warm from your fire. Break me, baker woman God. I am broken under your caring word. Drop me in your special juice in pieces. Drop me in your blood. Drunken me in the great red flood. Self-giving chalice, swallow me. My skin shines in the divine wine. My face is cup covered and I drown. I fall up in a red pool in a gold world where your warm sun skin hand is there to catch and hold me. Baker woman God, remake me.
remake us so that we too, each one of us and all of us, may rise up. Amen. And amen. I invite you now to turn in your black hymnals to number 386, to rise in body or spirit as you are able, that we might sing together the church's one foundation. Please be seated. And you almost got an amen again. <laughs> I just told a colleague the other day that since I grew up United Methodist and we always ended our hymns with amen, every once in a while when I end a hymn that I know really well, <laughs> boop, uh, amen almost pops out. But we Congregationalists don't do that, so that's okay. There are lots of ways to sing. I do want to offer gratitude for all the gifts that you continue to pour into this church through the offering boxes in the front and back of the sanctuary, through our online giving portal, through the time and talent, uh, the committee meetings, the work, the research, the, the better together work on um, our consolidation team, just all the ways you continue to pour yourselves and your many gifts into this church. We offer your th you our thanks, our deep thanks. And now, we will receive with gratitude our morning's offertory.
be seated. And I invite us now into a time of prayer together that we will begin with a sharing of our joys and sorrows and uncertainties that we will gather in silence through our Zoom chat and in person on the green prayer cards in your pew racks. After I gather the ones in the building and weave them together with the ones online, we will respond with an acclamation of the goodness of our God, some words of pastoral prayer, and then join our voices together and our spirits together in our Lord's Prayer. So as we begin to pray together, let us do so in silence so that we might gather our joys, sorrows, and uncertainties. spoken, shared, and the ones in the depths of our heart that have yet to make it to speech. We also, as an act of faith, continue to acclaim that God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Let us continue to pray. Good and gracious and holy God, praying like this is one of the ways we place before you so many uncertainties, so many sorrows, so many joys and celebrations. The things that move us in our lives and sometimes the things that keep us stuck in our lives and keep us from moving and being and being moved by your love. So with all the things we pray, O oh God, the prayers for healing, the prayers for comfort for those who mourn, the prayers for those for whom we care so deeply, friends, family, loved ones, loving pets, all the things that both give and receive our love, the people, the places, the planet, the places we plant not just the seeds that we hope will grow into flowers or trees, but the seeds that we hope will grow into peace and reconciliation and understanding. New life rising up. We pray these prayers, O oh God that your love may rise up within each of them and each of us. 
even as it did in those first disciples who gathered around you and who learned this prayer that the church has treasured and passed on for generation upon generation upon generation and that we now join our voices together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We turn once again in our black hymnals, this time to number four, to rise up in body and spirit and sing joyful, joyful, we adore you. Continue to rise up, knowing that the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit rises up within you. Amen. <laughs> 